member of the nationally acclaimed a cappella group, The Leading Tones, wonderful student of Abraham Clark High School, and son of Dwayne Patterson, Public Works <laughs> Supervisor, Dwayne Patterson, Jr. everyone on behalf of the council the board of education and myself we welcome you here today and thank you for sharing this memorial service with us before we get started I'd like to take a moment to introduce those of the council who are here the rest I know are coming as well as the board of education but first let me introduce to you third board councilwoman Ms. Stat say Second Ward Councilwoman, Carla Walker. And as I said, I don't know Donna Leisha. Oh, Do Donna Leisha from the Board of Education. Oh. <laughs> and I don't think I've missed anyone yet, but they will be here shortly to share the ceremony with us. I was going to have our uh, uh, president of the Board of Education introduce them, but we'll wait till later so you can meet all your board members and who represents you. Uh, also here today, I believe Assemblyman Holly, has he made it here today? Is he here? He's on his way. Okay. All right. I just wanted to speak a moment about something because as I reflected this day, I was profoundly aware that we are all here because of the brave military men and women who have made the ultimate sacrifice to ensure that we and generations to come have a future. What an incredible gift of life and freedom. Please let's pause and really think about this for a moment. And though no longer with us, let's thank them in our hearts and pray for them and the families they have left behind. If we could just have a moment of silence. Thank you. We have traditionally over the years combined the recognition of our fallen soldiers with the recognition of our veterans who have made it home. 
These brave men and women, at great risk to themselves, have defended and protected our country and others all over the world, and we and their fa families are blessed to have them home safe. They have respectively shared with me that veterans recognize Memorial Day as a time set aside to honor only our fallen soldiers and said that Veterans Day in November is when we recognize them and others who served in the military and combat. So this will be the last year that we will combine the two ceremonies together and we will observe Memorial Day in June and Veterans Day in November, and I'm sure my colleagues will agree, they deserve the separate honor and distinction. However, having said that, I know that no one here today will object to us combining both ceremonies one last time to thank our veterans who made it home for their service to our country. You are the true heroes in our eyes. We admire your courage and sacrifice to our nation and the sacrifices your families made. It is beyond an honor to be here with you today. God bless you all. Thank you. Just before our invocation, I'd like to call Miss Louise McGlory and the Poppy Girls. Our Poppy Girls today are Daniela and Michaela Janowski. Okay. Unfortunately, our poppy girls were not able to make it. However, Ms. Louise McGlory will present the wreath. They're hiding up with the nervous. And now we'll have our invocation by our own American. We'll be honoring our very own firefighter, Jarrell Benjamin. I read the plaque. It says, Mayor Christine Danzaro and the Roselle Borough Council proudly honor Darrell Benjamin, U.S. Navy Petty Officer. This award has been bestowed upon you in appreciation for your dedication and never forgetting the price paid for freedom and for your loyalty to our American heroes, May 2016. <laughs> U.S. Army Sergeant. King entered the U.S. Army in 1979, <laughs> taking the oath of service in Newark, New Jersey, Military Induction Center. He took basic training and advanced individual training at Fort Bliss, Texas, becoming an air defense artillery short-range gunnery crewman. He served seven years active duty serving in Fort Bliss, Texas, two tours, Germany, Korea, and Fort Ord, California. He was honorably discharged and later enlisted in the Army Reserves with the 920th Transportation Company, Jersey City, New Jersey, where he served six years to include being recalled to active duty for Operation Desert Shield Storm for a total of 13 years of service. In Operation Desert Storm, Sergeant Wilson received one of his Army Commendation Medals for materials achievement while serving as squad leader for the 920th Transportation Company from December 6, 1990 to May 24, 1991. 
During the ground war, he also volunteered for two additional missions deep in Iraq, resuffling much-needed fuel to the 2nd Armored Cavalry Regiment and 3rd Armored Division. During his complete time in service, he received the following awards and decorations, Army Service Ribbon, Overseas Service Ribbons Three, National Defense Medal, Army Achievement Medal, First Oak Leaf Cluster, Army Commendation, Medals First Oak Leaf Cluster, One for Operation Desert Storm, Non-Commissioned Officers Professional Development Ribbon, Army Good Conduct Medals Three, Sharpshooter and Grenade and M16 Rifle, and Southwest Asia Service Medal. Now, Mayor Christine Danzel and the Roselle Borough Council proudly honor King David Wilson, U.S. Army Sergeant. This award has been bestowed upon you in appreciation for your dedication and never forgetting the price paid for freedom and for your loyalty to our American heroes, dated May 2016. Jr., Lieutenant Colonel, U.S. Army, retired. He graduated from Abraham Clark High School in 1967. After high school graduation, he attended Seton Hall University and through the ROTC program was commissioned Second Lieutenant Infantry in the United States Army in 1971. He is a graduate of the Army's Command at General Staff College. From 1973 to 75, he served on active duty at both Fort Benjamin Harris, Indiana, and Fort Ritchie, Maryland, as a member of the Adjutant General Corps. While at Fort Ritchie, LTC, Belkowitz served as a general staff officer for the United States Army Communications Command for the Continental United States. From 1976 through 1999, LTC Belkowitz served in and held numerous staff and command positions in various United States Army Reserve units to include the 8th Medical Brigade, Brooklyn, New York, the 78th Maneuver Training Command, Fort Dix, New Jersey, the 1150th United States Army Reserve Forces, School, Brooklyn, New York, where he served as school commandant for a time and as commander of the 10th Quartermaster Battalion, Lodi, New Jersey. In 1999, LTC Belkowitz was placed in the United States Army Reserve status and was officially retired from the United States Army in 2009, over 37 years of military service to his credit. May Council proudly honor John Belkowitz, Jr., U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel, this award has been bestowed upon you in appreciation for your dedication and never forgetting the price paid for freedom and for your loyalty to our American heroes, May 2016. Thank you so much for your service. Logan. I would like to honor Logan Wolf for coming out this morning with his dad, <laughs> who is our very own code enforcement official, Richard Wolf who is being honored today. Richard Wolf was a mass communications specialist, Petty Officer Richard M. Wolf from the U.S. Navy. He has served 20 years and five months in the U.S. Navy. He's been deployed three times. He was a reservist since May 2007 in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. His wife, Yashika, and his father have been the greatest support to him Richard Wolf retired from the U.S. Navy on September 1st, 2015. He credits his ability to succeed to his grandfather, Herbert Wolf, a World War II veteran, and his wife, Yashika, who has stood beside him during these recent difficult deployments. Richard and Yashika have a total of... How many children? Five children. All right, woo! Which Dan has to support over his seven total deployments in the Navy. 
He's been deployed in support of missions in Bosnia, Haiti, Lithuania, Kosovo, and some he can't even mention today. His last active duty posting was at the Naval War College in Newport, Rhode Island. He has been awarded two Joint Service Commendation Medals and one Army Commendation Medal in addition to the NATO Medal two Afghanistan campaign medals, and the Global War on Terrorism Expeditionary Medal. He also was awarded three Navy Achievement Medals. He's received numerous citations and awards during his military career for journalism. During his last tour of duty in Afghanistan, Richard was badly injured and almost lost the use of his left arm. But after surgery and months of rehabilitation, he can now do most of what he could do before his injury. His career in the Navy culminated with an honored invitation by President Obama to visit the White House on July 4, 2013, where he had an opportunity to speak to the President and First Lady, before being personally recognized by the President in his yearly Independence Day televised speech. Our very own Richard Wolf, Mass Communication Specialist, U.S. Navy. Mayor Christine Dandero and the Roselle Borough Council proudly honor Richard Wolfe, U.S. Navy Petty Officer First Class. This award has been bestowed upon you in appreciation for your dedication and never forgetting the price paid for freedom and for your loyalty to our American heroes. Richard Wolfe, U.S. Navy Petty Officer First Class. Good morning. Good morning, all. Uh, I'd like to read this in tribute to our Roselle Police Department, Sergeant Soka. Sergeant Michael Soka has been a member of the Roselle Police Department for the last nine years and graduated from Roselle Catholic High School in 1995. Boy, that makes me feel good and young. <laughs> he immediately enlisted in the United States Marine Corps and served active, and served active uh, duty until 2000 as an aircraft countermeasures technician. A soldier deployed aboard the USS Kassarge in support of Kosovo, uh, Kosovo the Libertarian Campaign with the 26th Marine Expedi uh, Expeditionary Unit. Upon honorable discharge, Soka re-enlisted in the New Jersey Army National Guard in 2001, assigned to Picatinny Arsenal as an aircraft technician, earning the rank of Staff Sergeant. In 2003, Sergeant Soka entered Officer Candidate School and commissioned as a second lieutenant in 2005 with a degree in management from the New Jersey Institute of Technology. Michael continues to serve in the New Jersey uh, Army National Guard as a logistic and, uh, logistician at the rank of captain and has successfully led soldiers both domestically and abroad in the following areas of operation. Operation Jump Start in conjunction with the Department of Homeland Security, Operation Iraq Freedom, Hurricane Katrina and Sandy Civil Authority Support, Operation Enduring Freedom as Logistic Advisor to Afghanistan's First Mobile Strike Force. Sergeant Soka is currently assigned as a supervisor in the Roselle Police Department Traffic Survey Safety Bureau and is married to Alyssa. They have four children, Natalie, Stefano, Marka, and Ayea, and it's, where, where's the sergeant? Oh, okay. <laughs> How are you? All right. Woo! Woo! Oh, this is all right. At the, right, okay, okay, okay. Who is a veteran of the United States Air Force? Woo! And introduce yourselves. And now Councilwoman Carla Walker will read the proclamation for Sergeant William Joseph Jr. Proclamation in honor of Sergeant William Joseph Jr from the Mayor and Borough Council of the Borough of Roselle, New Jersey. Whereas, William Joseph Jr. was born April 13, 1986 in Florida. He and his parents who had immigrated from Haiti moved to New Jersey 
where he completed his elementary education and later attended Graceville Day Middle School and graduated Abraham Clark High School in 2005. And whereas he enlisted in the U.S. Army in 2010, completing both his basic combat and advanced individual training at Fort Leonard Wood in Missouri, where he obtained certification as a chemical operations specialist. He was employed to Kuwait and served with the 401st Chemical Company out of Boston, Massachusetts during Operation Enduring Freedom in 2014. And whereas upon returning to the United States, he resumed his residence in the borough of Roselle and was assigned to the 411th Chemical Company in Edison, New Jersey, where he is currently serving. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Mayor Christine Danzero and the Borough Council of the Borough of Roselle do hereby honor and recognize Sergeant William Joseph Jr. for his dedication and outstanding service to our nation. Signed, May 30th, 2016. <laughs> Sergeant Joseph could not be here today, but we definitely appreciate his service. And thank you all for your service and your continued service. I'd just like to acknowledge that Assemblyman Holly is here. Welcome and thank you. I know you're going to be, you're going to be providing and reading one of the, um, the um, proclamations. You want to step forward? What's up, little guy? Thank you. Good morning, Roselle. How are you? Let's give it up for our veterans. Come on. They have sacrificed their lives, their families, their community, and uh, I'm just so honored to be here uh, before you all today. I want to thank the mayor and council and the Department of Recreation for rescheduling this. Uh, you know, I've always said, this is the, my little soldier right here, my little veteran right here. Keanu, want to take a look? I, uh, I've always said uh, throughout the course of the years that veterans and, 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 and our first responders are special people because at any given moment, they leave their homes and uncertain of whether or not they'll return home. I'm not sure I can do that. I'm a politician, we're out in the forefront, but veterans and first responders have a have a, a special heart because they put their lives on the line for each and every one of us. To me, that is commendable. To me, that is admirable. And any given time that I have the opportunity to say that, I do because it's a special mark moment for those gentlemen and women who make that ultimate sacrifice. And so I'm honored today to partake in these services but in particular, I want to uh, recognize uh, this American Legion. Uh, this Legion here is a staple here in our community. And it has been through fires. It has been through storms. Trees have hit it. And just like all of us, when we get knocked down, we rebuild ourselves. And this home, I call it a home, because it is our home here. This veteran home is the example of what the men and women who serve in our armed forces represent. Strength, determination, and it is just an honor that we were able to reschedule this and make it here today. And so I'm quite honored. I'm also equally honored to uh, present this next award and plaque to our good friend, Robert Red McGlory. Stand up, Red. I don't know about any of you, but I've been on this soldier, I call him, for a very, very long time. And he's the face of this building, believe it or not. Because when you need to get anything done here, who do you call? We call Red. And at any given moment, when you call Red, he answers, and he produces. And so, Red, I know you received many, many honors over the years, 
And we are very just proud of you. And we know you held from Elizabeth, but we know that this is your second home here in Roselle because I think you stay more here than you do at home. And it is just such an honor because your military service in the Army as a sergeant is very much commendable. And I've heard the stories. If you haven't talked to Red, please talk to Red. He can give you a history of this legion and the history of the Armed Reserves. And he's just a classic man. He's just an admirable man. And I'm proud to know him. I'm proud to know that he's on our side. Because if he was on the other side, I don't know if you want to get yelled at Red, but I've seen him in action. But he's a good man. And Red, I want to just call you up just to present this to you on behalf of the mayor and council in our community uh, for your many years of service and your dedication to this legion. And to the dedication that you've been able to provide us through your armed services. And so, Red, please come up. And this reads, Mayor Christine Dan's role the Roosevelt Borough Council proudly honor Red Lavore, the U.S. Army Sergeant. This award has been bestowed upon you in appreciation for your dedication and never ending, forgetting the price paid for freedom and for your loyalty, your loyalty Way to, go, Red. to our American heroes. You can say that again. Say it again. <laughs> Hey, you guys. <laughs> he said, way to go, man. But Red, you all, you, 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 this is yours, man. And let me take this out. We present it to you. And if I can have the council members and the board of education members and the members of the administration come forward with me. Rev served from 1953 to 1956 to the United States Army 24th Infantry, Infantry Division the 52nd Military Police Company. His basic training was in Fort Dix, the Military Police School in Camp Gordon, Georgia, and he was deployed to Korea. He's received the Good Conduct Service Medal, the United Nations Participation Medal, the United Nations Korean Occupation Medal, the Suez Canal Expedition Medal, and now we present to you the Roselle Special <laughs> plaque for your dedication, Red. You are a great man, and we are so honored to uh, represent this, present this to you today. But to all the other uh, veterans that uh, are being honored today, I commend each and every one of you, my good friend here, King, and all the other members who couldn't be here. Uh, we thank you again for your years of service. God bless you. We had a guest speaker when he went to the Marine Corps convention, and you know how the Marines are, but after we have the refreshments here or later if you got some time you come in the downstairs we have a marine corps dedication place where you we house the central jersey leathernecks and you you would uh, it's a nice display if you have a time to walk around the building and look at it but i i want to thank some of the men members of the board of education the mayor and members of the city council with the borough council of roselle for this wonderful plaque but on behalf of my fellow servicemen who didn't come home, those who are on the wall of the Barrow Library, I dedicate this to them. Amen. Okay. Now, our guest speaker, like I said, Staff Sergeant uh, Terrell, he's at the Marine Corps Convention. I won't take too much of your time. We have hot dogs and refreshments, beer for the adults, soda for the children, and we want everybody to have a good time. But I would be remiss if I didn't say something that I learned with all the years I've been here. I've been the post commander here for 37 years, and I've seen men who served in Desert Storm, those who served in Vietnam. I see Freddie Knight, who's a Roselle resident all his life, with the 29th Infantry in Vietnam. Billy Ludecky, who served at the 101st Airborne in Vietnam. I just want to say that those heroes who didn't come home, they were just like me. We were just normal people. But in the early 50s, it was a different story. You were called into the service, and we were going whether you, I didn't care if you were Elvis Presley, you were going into the service. But I look back on that, and I, and I say to myself, it wasn't a bad thing. Because I used to jump out of bed and be late for school. My mother would wash my clothes, my mom would make my supper, and I found myself in the military doing everything myself and getting hollered out if I didn't do it right. And 
So the one thing I learned about the borough of Roselle, and I'll make it brief, this is a patriotic borough. This borough is the second to none. I, the other day, I was selling poppies in front of Pinos Bakery. And I used to do it in front of Ziabres, but they closed and they left. And I wrote a two-page, actually, I'm sorry, a two-sentence word, can we sell poppies in front of your bakery? The people at the Pinos Bakery responded, absolutely. And the people in Roselle were so generous that we set the record for poppies that we never had before in Roselle. Thanks to the generosity of the Pinos Bakery. And everywhere, everybody that came by, they were just so great. I tell you, right now, you look at your, your fire chief, Paul Muka, his brother Joe was here at 7.30 this morning setting up the hot dogs and ice and the soda and the beer and all the workers, Chris and his gang. I mean, th these are people that, there's no expression that you can say it. Tony Mogler, who lives right here in Amsterdam, he was here. Nick was here. I will probably forget somebody, but it won't be because I, I wanted Jack Ryan was here reading about the Yankees. We all were here. And every one of them did work, and they did it for what reason? Because they're proud of the veterans, proud of the people that served. Roselle Barrow takes second to no one when it comes to patriotism. You know, you're going to be amazed when I say this, but the reason I'm going to say it is very simple. I never got hired in Buck Sergeant in the Army. Well, my one brother retired from the Air Force as a Master Sergeant. My other brother retired from the Marine Corps as a Lieutenant Colonel, went back to Desert Storm into the Army, retired from the U.S. Army after 10 years as a Brigadier General. So I, I, here's a guy in college was a leader against the war in Vietnam, ends up getting three pensions, a Marine Corps pension, an <laughs> Army pension, and he worked for the government. So he's doing pretty really good. Currently lives in Georgia and has got a lot of money. Me, I left the Army in 1956. I got the, what they called the Truman Year, which was enacted in 1951, but got me in 1956, actually 55. I stayed behind as a POW guard. And I just want to say, there are a lot of boys, and yes, young women who stayed behind, who never got to see things like we did, like my fellow veterans here that were on it today. At least we got to see our families grow up. We got to see our children go to school. We got to see so many wonderful things. Those poor guys and gals never turned, never turned 20. They're lying in graves all over, in France at Omaha Beach. I can go on and on. And the poppies we sell are for those who died in World War I in Flanders Field. So many military veterans, so many young people. Listen, I hate war. And anybody who's been involved with in it knows it's a dirty, lousy, rotten business. However, somebody has to do it. And me, do I believe in a strong military? Absolutely. Do I believe in war? Absolutely not. And this isn't political, because I'm, I'm not a politician. But we do need a strong military, and I hope whoever wins the next election will build the military to where we're strong. Because my friends, don't fool yourself. Our adversaries hate us. They can't buy their friendship. The ISIS group, the first thing they're going to do if they ever take this country over, which will never happen. But the first thing they would do was take care of, make sure all the women were second-rate citizens. We weren't brought up that way. In my house, my woman's been the general for 48 years. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and that, that's the way we live. It's the same thing with the Russians. Listen, I love the Russian Federation. I met a Russian lady on vacation in the Dominican Republic who said they love Americans, but the government doesn't. Now, for Vladimir Putin to make a statement just three days ago, that the next war, America will feel part of the perils of war. In other words, he was implying in World War I and World War II, we weren't bombed like Russia was. However, what he forgets one thing. If he even dreams of the day that he can attack America and get away with winning, he's crazy. Because let me tell you something, and I'll close with this. America is a nation of immigrants. We're all immigrants. Or as Ronald Reagan once said, 
35 years ago, we were a nation of bastards. I hate to use that word because I don't curse that much, except when I get angry. But think about it. We're African Americans, we're Portuguese Americans, we're Japanese Americans, we're Korean Americans. The most decorated unit, for those who don't, aren't aware of this, the most decorated unit in World War II was the Japanese Division Regiment, the 445th. I'm sure the retired man knows this. They were the most decorated unit in World War II. Japanese Americans whose parents, they weren't in internment camps, they were in prison camps. They were denied everything. But you know what? When America gets pushed, Republicans love Democrats, independents don't know who they love, but they'll join up. And God forbid anybody that takes us on because they won't win. And I'll close with, God bless America and God bless every single religion, whether you're Catholic, Protestant, Christian, Islamic, or Buddhist, Hindu, I can go on and on. But when it comes to America, we're all Americans. God bless our country and God bless you. Thank you. True American and dedicated Roselle citizen. Now we'll have the staffing of the flag by the Roselle Police Department, followed by the three volley salute and the playing of tap. Aim. Fire. 